Hey guys, I realize I've not been very good at actually showing my face on these videos, so I thought I'd start out this one doing that. So I'm getting ready to start um, my next step on the anise resin that I've been doing these live videos on. It's been a little while, I've been um, busy, but ready to start this next step. So, um, let me start by showing you, I'm going to go over quickly my supplies again because I've getting some questions, so try not to repeat that too much, but just um, to, I don't know, just give a refresher on what I'm using. So, I'm painting her in oils. Let me flip this around now. Okay, I'm painting her in oils, and I have my um, glass palette here. Um, the colors that I'm using are bone black. I sometimes also use ivory black. I sort of use those interchangeably. Burnt umber and titanium white. I have some other colors left on there, but these are the three that I am using. My medium, i um, getting a lot of questions about that. So I like to thin my oils with refined linseed oil. And then, um, so the linseed oil, actually you can see right there, it says it slows the drying. So I don't want my oils to dry more slowly, so I speed them up. I had been using um, cobalt dryer, and you can still use that. I add just a drop to my medium to speed up the drying. Um, but just very recently, I've been trying this, Galkid Light, which has a bit more of a linseed oil consistency versus the cobalt dryer is very liquid would like and I will say this is much much more power powerful also uh, side note like I see the warnings on the back of this are much more extreme um, of if you have any contact with your skin you're supposed to wash your hands for five minutes so it's not the <laughs> safest of substances so this doesn't have quite the same level of warning as far as in, um, you know contact with your skin so it seems like it might be a little friendlier but um, it's also not quite as intense so I actually tried this straight up as my medium because it does has a have a similar consistency to the linseed oil um, it was it was a little bit too fast but nothing like I mean if I had just added that so um, I'll show you again the cons or the um, quantities that I use to mix. I don't know if I lost or I accidentally hit a button. I think I'm still here. <laughs> okay, sorry if the screen went black. I'm trying to mount this to my tripod. Okay. So I take some of my linseed oil with a palette knife and I honestly, I just eyeball this. But you know, somewhere around a quarter size, little puddle there. I, if you're, if you are using the cold water dryer, I would aim for a little bit more linseed oil because it requires more diluting. And then, so do a little bit more linseed oil than that, and then just a single drop of dryer, and that's all you need. For the Galkid Light. I'm going to add not quite half that amount, just like a single uh, palette knife full. I know that's super precise. <laughs> Sometimes these things, you just have to play around with them for yourself to see what feels right for you. See if I missed anything. So tonight while I'm working, my uh, phone is not gonna be right in front of me so I won't be able to answer as many questions once I get started. How do we not get dust in the paint? Dust always happens. It's inevitable, um, but keeping it, um, so I, I'll show you, I have a hutch that I can close. I like to stick them in there and I can close that. 
and that will help um, control the dust a little bit. Um, and then just picking some, of, picking the dust out once you get started. So actually, that's a good reminder. I was going to show you what I do before I start each new layer. I just give it a quick once over. Try to inspect for any really obvious pieces of lint and I either use my fingernail, which of course again, whenever I do these videos, <laughs> my manicure is uh, well past overdue. Um, but yeah, I'll either use my fingernail to scrape out any little pieces of lint or I use the carbide scrapers. So I realize right now you can't really see too well. I like to hold it up close to my face to really, really look for bits of lint and pull them out. So I think it's, it, I find it most effective if between each layer I'm picking out. And I will say, depending on the color that you're doing, um, like something with a lot of texture and the coat, coat color is honestly a little more forgiving of bits of lint, not that you ever want them, but there are times that they're really difficult to get certain pieces out without seriously scratching the paint job. And at this layer, this step, um, uh, with how many more layers that I'm going to be doing still, let's say I scratch a little piece of lint out and it actually scratches the paint. I know that in later layers, I can make up for that and cover up that. You can also, if you feel like, um, if the scratch is bad enough, that a new layer is just, is not gonna completely hide it. Or I think most of the time it does. I guess if you're using more translucent colors, you might have more trouble, but you could always spot patch it, let it dry, and then continue with the complete next layer. That's always a way you can go about it. But I'm not seeing too much lint on her tonight. Okay, that's good. Let's see what else we've got. Okay, I think that's about it. Cool, okay. Also, show you another trick that I do with my um, so not curl over. <laughs> I do with my references. So, this is the picture I'm working from tonight. Um, but I'm working on this side of her, so they're flipped. You could flip those in your head, but I think it's much easier to actually flip it. So, depending on what programs you have, I'm just I'm on a Mac, so I'm just using the preview um, program. And I just go to tools and flip horizontal. So now it's the same orientation. Makes it a lot easier for my brain to work. I'm actually using um, a few references. I usually like to use a single horse as a reference, but there are times when I find a lot of them that are in a sort of similar stage or similar coloring and there are different characteristics that I like of each so I really like this one sorry my fingers in the way there I really like this one but it's not a very clear photo especially when I zoom in I'm losing any detail but I like how dark her neck is there and I really I think what made me decide to do this this color was this shot right here, but I could never find any um, body shots. I even reached out to the photographer, <laughs> but never heard back. Um, it, was a pre it was posted several years ago, so. Um, I really liked this head shot, and I feel like especially the length of the mane is the same as Anis's. Um, so I'm gonna be using that one in conjunction with this. You can see it's got a bit um, smaller of dapples more darkness up there. So anyhow, side note there. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up my paint. So I also, since my last video, you can see that I 
continued step two all along the body. I just didn't bother creating a video since I was doing the exact same thing as I showed you for the neck and shoulders. Um, but now I'm going to be going, pushing the dark a little bit darker. So I'm still not going pure black. I'm not sure if she'll have this anywhere. Maybe she'll wear a few places, but I'm for the most part going to be mixing white, just a little bit of white into every area. And I also don't really have a science as far as how much of the medium mixed with the dryer I add to the paint. It's really just by feel and also depends on what I'm actually working on. So I'm going to, this step is going to be a little bit more detailing of the dapples and I'm going to begin getting some of the hair texture going. Uh, so how I do that is I still put down a pretty, a, a nice thin even layer of a dark color and then come over top with the dapples. I, if, if the dapple color, so whatever I'm gonna make the, a light tone, if that's too, if it's too thin or like the same consistency as the dark, when I go to blend them, they're going to much more easily just blend together. I want the dapple color to have a little bit more, to be a little, a bit thicker of a consistency so it doesn't blend as easily. Also, the thinner your paint is, the, thin, the less um, pigment you're actually putting down. So I go for, like I said, a, a thinner consistency with this base dark color. You can see how fluid that is. It's starting to get almost syrupy. Now I'm gonna mix up my dapple color. And actually, I lied, I said I was just using that. I think I am gonna use this yellow ochre, it's, and it's still good. It's from a few days ago. So if you remember from some of my other videos, when you use white directly in, or over top of uh, a dark color, it's going to pull even cooler. Now I think I got a little bit too much yellow. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just adjust it. I'm also still not going to be going um, totally light. I'm going to darken this a bit. I want to really create a depth of texture by um, building the hair texture in layers, starting a little bit more of a mid-tone and bumping it all the way up to light, and that will give it more dimension. Whereas if I started with a white straight off, it would look really harsh. But actually, I think that might be a pretty decent tone. I might actually make two. Make one that's a little bit lighter. Just in case I want a little bit of that. Okay, looks pretty good. I know it's a little bit tricky to quite tell what tones I'm using, but I'll pull a little bit of white over there so you can see in, in contrast. Okay. About to sit down, I won't be able to see, so let's see if I missed anything. Okay, I don't think so. All right, and really quickly review of the brushes that I use. These are my favorite um, brushes. I think they work really nicely, but they're also super cheap. Um, this the silver white Filberts. I use both the long handles and the short handles. And the long handles, I like the six and the two the most. And then in the short handles, I like the four, the one, two, and four, generally. So 
I'm using a variety. And also at diff different levels of fraying and knots. Okay, let's see if I get situated okay. 